like a Vucity Views logo? If you do, then you might want to buy a t-shirt with the channel's logo. Just head to geekygoodies.com slash Reviews and grab a t-shirt for yourself or your friends. By buying Vucity Views t-shirts, you are supporting the channel, and I'm thankful for that. And don't forget that you can also support the channel through Patreon. Just head to patreon.com slash Reviews and choose the reward level that suits you best. Your support means a lot. With enough support, this channel will continue providing you with the content and you will be able to contribute to that as well. Thank you to everyone who watches and supports the channel. Hello there folks, welcome to the first impression series where I talk about the games that I have played only once so far. And for the note, this is not a review. Now, today we are taking a look at the Cosmogenesis. It's uh, from Ives Turini and Ludonova should be a company. So, um, what drew me in into this game, first of all, when I bought it in Essen, um, last Essen 2017, is the cover itself. It looks really cool, really nice. Um, I'm all about, I'm all about kind of a scientific space uh, thin game and not really the sci-fi itself. So th there's this science fiction thing over there, those like Star Wars and such and, and so on. So I'm not into that. I don't really like that uh, but when the science itself comes in which is like it's it's re it's real it seems to be real. like terraforming Mars it's kind of a real science you know kind of of course it's it's a future it's sci-fi but on a, on a more on a science size as a site not a fantasy side you know and that's what I like about some of those games and this is the one which has a science in it and there's no fantasy I mean like of course some mechanics might be not extremely thematic because they need to make the game fun instead of just putting in the facts about the space and so on but so anyway uh, there were some editorial notes that they read so that they kind of some of the things that happen in this game uh, thematically they are they might be not scientifically correct 100 percent because they need to make the game fun as well with the mechanics so anyway what I want to say is this Cosmogenesis drew me in with this um, theme, which is creating planetary systems. Cool, I like that. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's different, it's unique. I haven't really played any of the games like that. So, and the, um, the art itself uh, on, the, on, the, um, what would say, on, the, on the box, um, the art in the box, on the components, it's, um, it's minimalistic. There's not much of the art in, in, on the components themselves. But um, I feel like it kind of helps. So usually I like to have a great artwork in the games, but in this game, lack of much of the artwork, um, not a little lack, but you know, this minimalistic approach to the art, there's not much and more kind of a clean design, the art design uh, kind of helps the game because then you see exactly what happens. But still the game on the board and, and uh, on, uh, on the table, uh, the board and everything it looks stylish once you start playing and creating those planets and such it starts kind of um, forming a thematic sense to you you know more and more so the game itself um, it has the worker placement so you have your four uh, whatever the the, uh, the pawns whatever they are and you have the locations on the boards from where you can get um, new planets new moons uh, you can get uh, meteorites, uh, you can get comets and such, so you can get all different, and then you can get also the objectives. The cool part about that one is now, uh, you have four of your pawns over there, and each player has four pawns, and there are four different kind of uh, sectors of the, uh, from this sector and this sector and that sector and that sector, where you can place your workers. You can place only one of your workers in, in each sector, so you're kind of you're not really blocking each other from any of the sectors, which is really cool because then all the options are open for you. But if you go to the sector first, if you're the first one to go to that sector, you have more choices to take from. And at some point, which is also cool, is that I already see like we play the three player games. So I saw that the two players only already went to that sector. So the other two players, so they won't grab anything else from that sector. So I'm not in a hurry. To, to get my pawn over to that sector because I can get it anytime I want and then I'm just gonna grab uh, uh, something else from another sector where I still have more choices. 
And what we're basically doing, you are taking planets, uh, and there are they are different size, and they are not inhabited. They are they don't have any life forms or water and so on. And then you're putting them out. So you have your own board where you are creating those. Um, uh, you, you're creating basically planets and uh, and orbits with moons and such. So you can take the smaller planets which become moons. You can and take the bigger planets and put them in in as planets. Uh, you can collide the planets together. So uh, and when you collide them, then one of the planets becomes bigger, the other planet becomes smaller, and kind of a, they can change places. And now this planet becomes kind of a bigger, and now it has more of a weight, and then it grabs all the other planets surrounding it into the moons. Uh, I mean, like as uh, basically the other planets become moons and so on. There's uh, it's really hard to explain. You have to see it itself, and I have to teach you the game. But uh, overall, uh, what, what you're doing is that you are managing resources, kind of grabbing some resources, managing, managing them. What should be the planet? What should be the moon? And then you are trying to get the meteorites because the meteorites, um, they give life. So if you collide the meteorites into the planet, uh, it starts booming and the, and the life uh, starts evolving over there. But first of all, you need water and, and uh, oxygen and so on and then you need uh, comets and, uh, and the comets come in and they collide into the planet as well and they can collide into the moons as well and create life on moon and create life on the planet itself and then you have those different um, belts basically where you put those planets and create everything and yeah as, as you see me talking about all of that I, I'm really excited because it's really thematic you create planetary systems, you collide uh, uh, spatial uh, terrestrial bodies and spatial objects and so on. And there are those uh, terms, you know, like terrestrial body and celestial bodies and so on. And then you have those objectives. The, the cool part is that there are those objectives over there and the objectives are different. Some of the objectives are the um, uh, rectangular and some are the kind of uh, not, not like... Um, basically, some you stick to the planets themselves, to the uh, planets in their orbits uh, themselves because they complement those and some are totally separate which are kind of end game conditions that you're going to score extra points for that. But the cool part about objects is that, uh, for example, um, the object shows you that you need to have the planet uh, with the life form of size of minimum of four and then you need to have two moons orbiting that planet with size at least two and yeah and so on and there are also those gas planets as well uh, with the gas planets gas planets cannot become moons and gas planets are always bigger than anything else um, but gas planets are good for they cannot have the life form but they are good for the objects and they're gonna give you quite a few points so from there and they you need to have the rings for the gas plant as well sometimes and so on so we're kind of uh, trying to manage and trying to create those specific orders and specific um, forms on each of your orbits, on each of your whatever they are, belts and orbits, so you can uh, complete the objectives of those and stick them uh, there. And yeah, it's um, it sounds a little bit abstractish and so on. Uh, maybe I'll do the the full review of the game itself. But I really, really enjoy the game. I really enjoy how it evolves, how thematic it is, and. Um, how there is interaction between players but on the other hand because of the grabbing of the objects and so on but on the other hand you each doing your own thing but you if there would be too much of that screw up uh, over the other opponents then that would lose the, the game would lose because then it would become i don't know it maybe it would be you know unsatisfying that because of all the other players you couldn't complete your planetary system and so on and but you want to create, you know, it's all, this game is all about creating, not destroying. And, which is really cool. And you have the meteorites belt and comets belt. And then there are some spe specialities and nuances as well. But they're cool. What you can do with meteorite, what you can, what you can do with this one, what you can do with that one. I, I, just, I just really like this game from the first play. And I really want to play it again. And I'm really hoping maybe at some point they'll do the expansion as well and add something else. But yeah. Just from from the start, it's um, like after the first play, it's around 8 out of 10 for me because I really enjoyed the thematic sense of the game and, and, the, and the mechanics. Uh, although the rulebook, the rulebook is written well, uh, it's, it's fine. And, and then 
I just, what, what I felt is that the mechanics tie into the theme really, really well, but the mechanics aren't too complicated. It's not a simulator as well. So uh, it, it's mechanically, it's, it's midweight, but it has a lot of theme in my opinion. So that's Cosmogenesis. Thank you for watching and we see you another time. Bye. This channel is sponsored by Osprey Games. Check them out at ospreypublishing.com.